and the, the human. And when we um, ask the question, you know, how do we get out of here? Then for me, when I've, I've looked at the different explanations, it can, it can sound terribly complicated. That you, you basically spend your whole life uh, doing things and whatever, going on quests and drinking green tea, whatever, to, um, to reach this state of enlightenment, when actually to, 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 to break out of the wheel of samsara, this would say, when actually I think it's all about, about self-identity. It's, it really is as simple as that. For me, all genius is to see the simple hidden by the complex, the apparently complex. And given that, you know, we live in an infinite reality that is the ultimate genius, then answers tend to be simple rather than complex. What you have is all these scientists and academics, and they're, they're looking at the complex. If it's not complex, it can't be real. Or the answer's not complex, it can't be an answer. When actually it's 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 really simple, in my view anyway. So if you um, are in a human body and you're self-identifying with the human body and the labels of it, you are self-identifying with limitation. I can't, it's not possible. And I was therefore, because I'm just a little me, I have no power, I've got to look up to experts to tell me what to think. And what I found interesting, um, Jeff, listening to near-death experience accounts is how that dynamic transfers itself into the astral, where um, consciousness souls leave the body and then they're, they're faced with other authority figures. They may be religious heroes, they may be uh, spirit guides or elders or, or whatever, but they're a form of authority and the perception is that that authority knows more than you do so basically people follow the authority and the guidance of the authority and it, it's in that way although the the frequencies are different and um the astral is far less dense or most of it anyway than the um the human world incredibly dense um the dynamic it, it tends to be the same and so you've got this self-identity of human and limitation. And that self-identity, for me, expresses itself in the frequency you're operating on. So if you think you're little me and have no power, you are operating on a very low level of frequency compared with what you could be. And because of your myopia, your myopia of self-identity you are accessing a comparable amount of the infinite field of awareness. And therefore, um, your limited self-identity becomes your limited uh, perception of everything. When you go into the, uh, um, the astral as a, quote, uh, soul, then obviously your self-identity has expanded but you're still perceiving yourself as uh, an entity, an I, which uh, I say is the false I, just like the human is the false I. But when you, um, you self-identify as being a unique expression of all that is, has been, and ever can be, a unique expression of um, infinite awareness, that is beyond form, that is beyond all of it. That's when you are not even in the end um, generating a frequency. It's when you move beyond frequency into an infinite state. And that um, cannot be held. That, that frequency state that comes from that self-identity cannot be held in the simulation in the matrix uh, and you know it, it, it's interesting that the buddhists talk about the wheel of samsara 
and how you have to keep um, experiencing lives in this human reality to reach a state of enlightenment that you can escape the wheel. There's another esoteric um, concept that goes under the, 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 the name of the ring pass knot, which says that there is a level of frequency in effect beyond which you cannot go unless you've reached a state basically of enlightenment that you can go through it. And this is, uh, for me, uh, the difference between uh, being caught and trapped in this matrix simulation and escaping from it, not even escaping from it, just it's, I'm off now, bye, see ya, you're out. Because it cannot entrap you when you're in a, a state of awareness, a state of self-identity that's beyond the frequency walls of this simulation. Uh, and if you then um, play this off against the all the stuff that I do about the, the global cult manipulating global society, moving towards dystopia and all that stuff within the human world, and you see the... Uh, the, the impact of religions, the impact of uh, society in general, uh, the institutions of society, they are all having the effect of making you see yourself in limited terms, where you're just a, a human, that's all I am, or I'm a soul that's subordinate to God, that's all I am, that's what I am. And it's all about holding your perception and your self-identity in a state that's not going to uh, escape this simulation. And uh, so for me, um, if we want to impose ourselves on the simulation and, and stop being subordinate to its diktats and its impulses, then um, we've got to um, realize our true nature and become not as a concept, but as a being and, and live, that, um, live that life while in a human body, that we are consciousness. We are having a human experience. It's not who we are. And um, like I say, the, the whole pressure of society, whether it's religion or whatever, is to hold you in a state of self-identity that dictates your frequency, which holds you in the frequency walls of this um of this simulation um so the wheel of samsara continues do you have some sort of practice of meditation where you try to go to somewhere like the void and become one with this unified field well it's it's a, a, a interesting question because um when would it be around the early 2000s i was writing books about the the conspiracy the human conspiracy and all that stuff and but but also you know reality and i concluded that um if i was going to understand more i had to uh, experience these other realities um not just as uh, uh a um a concept but uh, or as a dream but i had to um consciously experienced them. And just as I was coming to that conclusion, I got uh, contacted by a group who um, were putting on a week where people were taking ayahuasca in a Brazilian rainforest. It's the only time that I've taken psychoactive drugs ever. So I went there and I could have taken it four times and took it, um, took it twice. Um, and that was enough for me because of what I got. And uh, I had an extraordinary experience where for five hours on the second occasion, a voice as loud as mine is now, took a female form, was talking to me about the illusory nature of human reality. And it was hilarious. It was very, very funny. I mean, they've got a sense of humor out there, I'll tell you. Um, and... What happened is I was kind of transported. My mind went to this, this void. Um, but it wasn't a void. Um, 
you know, when you're talking about infinity and the infinity of possibility, then all things must be possible. So we tend to think in human terms as either or. It either is or it isn't. It's everything or it's nothing. But within the realm of infinite possibility, all possibility is possible. And so within that uh, void, you kind of experienced everything and nothing. It was and it wasn't. All It was all possibility just waiting to manifest. And I was... Um, fascinated many years later because what it, it took the, the the form it was it was black but it was brilliant it's very difficult to describe because many people watching this show will have experienced it i'm sure it was like a brilliant blackness but it was everything and this voice said to me this is where you've come from and to where you will return. And a few years later, um, a lot of publicity uh, surrounded the, the book of Ibn Alexander. And um, I read his book about his um, near-death experience. And he said that he basically experienced this void. And, and I, I, I read the words. He said he called it the dazzling darkness. And I thought, my goodness me, that is exactly what I experienced in 2003. And th the voice went on to, to explain that the world that we think of physicality and um, external reality is actually an, an illusion. And that um, we are the consciousness having the experience but what's happened, of course, and this is all part of the manipulation of the, the, the simulation, is to trick us into believing that what we're experiencing is who we are. And after that, um, so you identify with fake identity. Oh, I'm the body. I'm a human. No, that's an experience. The labels of a human life are experiences. They're not uh an I in the eternal sense. And so uh, when I was um, when I was through with that and, and I'd experienced that, and I got so much uh, knowledge from that experience of five hours. And, and also I had instant recall of, of, of it as well. I didn't write it down or anything, but I, I could remember it all. Uh, but from that moment, um, I've what what I've what I've experienced, Jeff, uh, since uh, the top of my head blew off in um, 1990. That's another that's another story on a, a mound in Peru. Um, is that um, you know I'm uh, I, I am a a, a, a a state of awareness, and I'm. Uh, experiencing this reality but i'm not actually um this reality and it's uh, taking a step back into consciousness where you're in this world but you're not of it it's where you become the observer far more than the participant it doesn't mean you don't interact with the world you do but you do it from a different um, perspective. It's like, you know, when you have um, a dream and you think it's real, then your emotion.